God bless you. Welcome to the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today, uh, we're going to continue our Bible study in the book of Isaiah. And we have a very small chapter, chapter 39, that we are in today, where uh, we're going to see Hezekiah is recovered. He's been healed by the Lord, and uh, he went into the house of the Lord. So, going ahead on with this chapter, it says, At that time, Merodach, uh, Beladan, the son of Beladan, king of Babylon, he sent letters and he sent a present to Hezekiah. For he had heard that he had been sick and he had, you know, recovered, he'd been healed. So this king of Babylon sends this letter, send these letters over to Hezekiah to comfort him. And Hezekiah was glad to receive them and showed them the house of his precious things, the silver, gold, and spices, and different precious ointments he had in all the house and all of his armor and all that was found in the houses of all his treasures for there was nothing in this house uh, nor in all the, his dominion that hezekiah showed them not so then the prophet isaiah came to him he came to king hezekiah and he said to him what is this that i've heard you know uh now hezekiah said for they come these people came from another country those that were coming and they, you know, they came to visit him because he had gotten well. This uh, Merodachidan, the son of Beladon, the king of Babylon, they came to visit Hezekiah. And Isaiah's asking, who are these people? Where do they come from? Who are they? So then he said, uh, what have they seen in thy house? Isaiah asked him that. And Isaiah, Hezekiah asked, you know, he answered and said, he showed them everything that he had in his house. There's nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Then Isaiah says unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days shall come that all that is in your house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day, it shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left in that house, okay? Nothing shall be left in the house because it's going to be carried over to Babylon. And that is what happens. Because whenever the king of Babylon goes into Jerusalem to take over, to kill, steal, and destroy them, because God uses him as his chastising hand, at that time, that's when everything is taken and it is transferred over into Babylon, just like as uh, Isaiah speaks to Hezekiah in prophecy and tells him. And he said, and of thy sons that shall issue, uh, that shall be born from you, okay? Hezekiah's sons, which shall be born from him, which thou shalt bring to birth, they shall take be taken away also, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Okay, now that is going to be what's going to take place uh, in reference to this prophecy that Isaiah is giving to Hezekiah. And he says, Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. For he said, Moreover, for there shall be peace and truth in my days. Okay? So that was a prophecy that Isaiah gave to uh, Hezekiah in reference to <clears throat> what was going to take place in Jerusalem. <clears throat> and we did see <clears throat> all of that. We did read about all of that coming to pass. And Jeremiah also had that same prophecy, again, from the Jeremiah chapter 25. In verse 8, where it begins with uh, the prophecy, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my words, because the children of house of Judah, they were uh, continually uh, disregarding the words of God and walking in rebellion, doing their own things. So he says, behold, I'll send and take all the families of the north, says the Lord of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and I'll bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations around them. And I'll utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and a perpetual desolation. Okay, so that was the prophecy also. Jeremiah received in reference to uh, Jerusalem and the house of Judah in Jerusalem. He received that prophecy and we saw it go to come to pass in the end of uh, Jeremiah's books, chapter 50, starting at 49, 50, and 51. 
Okay, and let's see. Another scripture, 2 Kings chapter 24. I'm led to in reference to this little Bible chapter. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 24. That prophecy goes forward again. Second Kings chapter 24 and 1 and 2 verses in the day in his days Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon came up and Jehoiakim became his servant three years and then he turned and rebelled against them and the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldees and bands of the Syrians bands of the Moabites bands of the children of Ammon and sent against Judah to destroy it according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servants, the prophets. Okay. So that was a prophecy that was given out to many uh, prophets. As I've stated on this uh, video platform in reference to our uh, prophet series of prophets that we are talking about in the old Testament, which included Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Hosea, the prophetic ministry prophets from the old Testament how God spoke to them in reference to what he was going to do to the children of Israel and the house of Judah as they began to go forward in their rebellion, okay, and how he would use King Nebuchadnezzar to be his chastisement tool, I want to say, against them in order to uh, get them to go back and get back in line with God, and get back into alignment with his will. Okay, another scripture out of this chapter that I'm drawn to in reference to is uh, the verse in reference to the eunuchs, okay, where Isaiah tells Hezekiah that his son will be a eunuch in the palace of the king of Babylon. And he tells him that in what verse is it? He says that uh, verse 7. And of thy sons that shall issue, that shall be birthed from you, which thou shalt bring to forth in the earth, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs. Now, a eunuch, we do have two videos in reference to what the definition of a eunuch is. A eunuch is a man who does not have sex with a woman, okay? He doesn't have sex at all. Just like the woman is called the virgin, and a man can be called a virgin too, but in the word of God, he was given that specific word, a eunuch. Okay, but it is an individual man who does not have sex with women. Okay, and so uh, that is what God said will happen and take place with the sons of Hezekiah. So now, um, Matthew chapter 19, Jesus Christ goes into conversation about what a eunuch is. Chapter 19 in the book of Matthew. And it starts with verse 1 all the way to verse 12. And then I'm not going to read all of this. Let me see. Well, uh, let's see. Let's start with, uh, because they were talking about relationships and marriage. And it, I'll start at verse 1. It came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee, came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them. The Pharisees also came unto him, uh, asking him about uh, putting away a, a wife in marriage. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And then uh, he answered and said, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And we do see that recorded in Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 27 and 8, how God made male and female in his image. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father, mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more uh, two, but they become one. Okay, once they're joined together in marriage. Then they said unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorce? Okay, if they become uh, two. Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. He didn't want individuals to put away their wives but i say to you whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication okay unless she actually is in the marriage and has a relationship with another man 
begins to have, you know, fornication, then uh, it's okay for the man to divorce her, okay? But if he divorces her and she, it's not for fornication, then he's basically committing adultery, okay? So that's what it says in reference to that. But then going back up to what it says about the eunuch, he goes down here uh, in verse 11, but he says, but he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying except they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs, okay, men who do not have sex with women, which were so born from their mother's womb, okay, from their mother's womb. So they came into earth like that, okay, God birthed them into the earth. They were not to have sex with uh, women and some, okay, not to have sex at all. And he says, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. Okay, there are some that become like that because of men. And we do have a story in the word of God in reference to that in the book of Genesis where there were some angels that uh, had sex with some men inside, of, well, the men outside of the kingdom, I should say it like that, had sex with some angels that were in the kingdom. They thought they were very beautiful and, but they were men, okay? And they began to have sex with them. And so he's speaking in reference to men like that, okay? Uh, more than, more, I guess, other words, the word, the description, I guess I want to use to describe it is that because they did, they more or less, they raped the men, okay? It was other men in this particular, it was men in a particular city. And they saw how the sons of God, which were angels, how good they looked. They were very attractive to them. So they then went and forced themselves upon them. And so he's saying right here, Jesus is identifying that some men will become eunuchs because of an experience such as that. Okay. Where they won't want to have sex with women and they, you know, won't want to have sex at all. Okay. And he says, and there be eunuchs, which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Okay. They just will not have sex at all because they've decided that they want, they've been married. They've married, they're married to God and they're not going to have engaged in sex at all. Like some women, because they're married to God, they don't engage in sex at all. They're just one with God. Their spirit is in union with God. God is using them mightily in the earth because of that. Okay. Because they decided to just only rely on their relationship with him and move in the will of what he desires for them to do in their life. Okay, so that's just going into a little description on the eunuch and how um, that was what Isaiah said would take place in the lives of Hezekiah's sons. Okay, now um, Daniel, in the book of Daniel, we can also see that that came to pass, okay? The book of Daniel, because the book of Daniel speaks of that moment in time whenever the children of Israel, the house of Judah, did go into captivity under the king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar. And we go over to Daniel chapter 1, if I can pull it up here. Daniel chapter 1. And we can read a little into that chapter one uh, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim king of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon unto Jerusalem and he took it and the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God which was just we just read about the prophecy of that should take place and which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spoke unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, okay, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability to, to in them to stand in the king's palace and in whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans, okay? So the verse we want to just pay close attention to is verses 1, 2, and 3, really. And then verse really 3, because he says, The king spoke unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, okay? We see Ashpenaz was the master of the eunuchs 
in the uh, king of Nebu uh, King Nebuchadnezzar's palace, okay, in Babylon, where we see the eunuchs, certain children of Israel, okay, occupied that position and also were sent over into his palace. Daniel, now not Daniel not being a eunuch, but he was of the tribe of Judah, okay, of the skillful children that were sent over of the house of Israel to be in the palace, okay? And uh, verse 8 is another verse that kind of elaborates on this. Uh, let's see here. Mm. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself, okay? Because it was the eunuchs who came to him and wanted him um, to eat the food of the king, what had been prepared. But Daniel, because of his uh, background and his heritage and who he was, he didn't want to eat their food. He just he wanted to eat only vegetables, and that's what he ate. And he uh, informed the eunuch of his type of provision, that he doesn't eat that type of food. He would only be eating vegetables. And it says in verse 9, Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Okay, And the prince of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who has appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he say your faces? Why should he see your faces worse likening than the children which are of your sort? Then shall he make me endanger uh, my head to, to the king. So Daniel said uh, to this prince of the eunuchs, which has set over Dan set Daniel and Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, he says, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Okay? Because Daniel wanted to convince King Nebuchadnezzar and, of course, the eunuchs that, you know, by him eating the food that he eats and not eating the king's food, that his presence would be more enlightening. And it was because he didn't eat the meat that was placed before him, but he ate what meat he was used to eating, just like as with us. We only eat the meat of the word of God, which is placed from heaven. That is our man. Okay, whereas other individuals outside of the kingdom, they eat their own food, which is their manna from their God. Okay, that also takes us uh, to a whole nother revelation, which will be a whole nother video and a whole nother moment in time. All right, so God bless you. God be with you. Uh, that was the end of chapter 39 in the book of Isaiah Bible study. And I will see you on our next video as we continue our Bible study in the book of Isaiah. God bless you, God be with you, and I will see you until then.